Hi. Welcome to Wahe Group. Welcome to Yin Yoga with Gong. About to get started. So if you have yoga props, that's amazing. Grab a bolster, a blanket, and a couple blocks if you feel like you need them. Um, if you don't have specific yoga props, that's totally fine. Uh, just grab a couple pillows from your couch or your bed. And yeah, you can even do this in bed, which is a really cool practice of yoga. Um, it's really just about releasing and letting go. So let's begin. Oh, and if you like music for your yoga practice, you can put a little meditation music or new age music or whatever you feel onto your phone or your radio. All right, so let's get started. We're gonna start seated with a cross-legged pose. So you can sit on your butt on the ground. You can also elevate your butt onto a pillow or support system. And we're gonna turn the palms up to the sky. Start to tap into your breath. So close your eyes down. You don't really need to see. And you can do this whole practice pretty much with eyes closed. I'll do my best to explain thoroughly. And you really wanna keep that gaze, that focus soft and internal. So we're not pushing for seeing anything in the body. And just begin to feel your breath moving your body. Feeling that elongation of your spine as if there's a golden thread connected to the crown of your head and it's pulling you up, up into the cosmos, up into the stardust. And you want to feel your sits bones rooting down, feel the tail, every part of the leg that touches the ground just rooting down. Maybe envisioning those roots going down deep into the center of the earth. Palms are pointing to the sky in a receptive posture. <clears throat> Belly is soft and pliable as we breathe. Allow all of the busyness of your day to just rest. You can put it aside. And just be here present in this moment, committing to your practice. And we'll do a little pranayam to balance the body. Inhale to pull the breath in through the nose. Top of the inhale, retain the breath, but relax the shoulders, relax the abdomen, and hold the breath. Before you start to feel any strain, exhale through the nose all the way out. And at the end of your exhale, when your breath is empty, hold the breath out. And again, no strain, just hold that emptiness for a moment or two. It can be one second, it can be five, and then allow for the inhale to come. So we wanna do this taking a pause at the bottom of the breath before we inhale, and taking a pause when the breath is full, the body is full, but not to create tension while we're holding the breath, but to feel an expansion as we're holding the breath. And then we slowly exhale. So continue. I'm gonna do it with you so there won't be any talking.
Let your breath be audible. Inhale all the way. Retain the breath, relax in the retention. Exhale all the way out. Hold the breath out. Inhale when you're ready. Take five more rounds. Once you finish, allow the breath to just breathe as it wants to breathe, no control. Hmm. Inhale, sweep the arms high, reaching up as you inhale. Allow the right hand to come down, lean to the right, open wide. Use the exhale to stretch more. Inhale, both arms to the sky. Exhale, left hand to the earth, lean to the left. Breathing deep, lateral right side. Walk it to the front. Both hands reach forward. Exhale, bow the forehead towards the ground. As you inhale, allow the breath to rise you up. As you exhale, back to folding. So we'll oscillate. Inhale, slowly coming up. Following that breath, exhale, diving down. Let it be smooth and rhythmic, moving with your breath. The exhale brings in the forward fold as it softens the belly and the spine. The inhale activates and fills us, making for a little bit of buoyancy, leverage. Last breath, rise up as you inhale. Exhale, fold. Walk your hands to the right, bow your body towards your right leg. Soften the forehead, soften the whole chest towards that right leg, and just release. Slow inhale to walk the hands over to the left, bow your body towards your left leg, big exhale. Inhale, walk it to center. Last two breaths, exhale, fold a lot. Maybe get a tiny bit deeper. Inhale, rise up slow. Exhale, fold a lot. And inhale, calming all the way up to neutral spine. Slowly start to open the legs wide. 
taking them as wide as they'll go, and then bring your hands to your knees and just rock the legs forward and back. So the legs are passive, the hands are doing the work to rock the legs. And your hands can walk up your quads, giving maybe a little massage, gentle touch, activating those lateral meridians in the body. Lovely. Take your bolster or your pillow into the front of your body. And with legs as wide as they'll go, turn your feet off. Begin to bow forward. So you might need to make your support super high. If your forward fold is limited, that's okay. Create support for your body. If you can go all the way down without a pillow, also amazing. I'll take a bolster and meet me halfway. Again, the inhale lengthens soft. The exhale takes us forward. So you can stay completely still in the postures. You can also move lightly to create more space. So it's up to you. Yogi's choice tonight. Let the breath go deep into the pelvis. You're breathing into the pelvic floor, the muladhara chakra, the second chakra, svadhisthana. Deep breaths. Soften your face and soften your mind. Taking whatever inspiration comes with the inhale and whatever release with the exhale. And if you enjoyed the pranayam from the beginning of practice, sustaining those pauses when the breath is full and when the breath is empty, you can work with that through the whole practice. As long as it's not creating any strain, you can stay with that breath. Tonight, for me, it feels very beneficial, so I'm going to stay with that breath. But you do what's best for you, as long as you're not bringing in activating fire breath or something very intense. It's perfect for yin. Taking six more breaths in this wide leg forward fold, letting the breaths elongate. Relaxing your feet, relaxing deep to the belly, deep to the throat, behind your eyes starts to relax as well. Last big, full, complete, inhale, exhale here. And move as slowly as you can as you start to come out of the posture. Keeping that gentle yin, 
relaxed state of being. If you have a support, bring it to the side. Begin to bend the left knee, pulling it in slowly. Allow that left shin to go parallel to the top edge of your yoga mat. And then start to bend your right knee slowly, placing that right leg on top of the left. So the goal is box pose. And the idea is to have the shins running parallel to the sides of your mat and your shins running parallel to the front of your mat. You see, um, if you're looking at the screen, if not, no big deal. I have a lot of tension in my hips. So if you can't get your knee to the opposite heel, that's okay. You can also place your right foot in front of your left. So you're almost in a cross leg or supasana posture. But you just want to go into a pose that you feel the stretch, but it's not too intense, right? Because we're going to be here for a while. You can soften your elbows into the knee and the ankle. And the feet are slightly flexed without force. And the goal is to settle in. So once you find that posture, you can also place a block between your left foot and your right knee if your knee is really floating. Follow your breath, option to bow forward if you feel you need to deepen. You go deep into the hips to find full exhales. Long deep breathing. And if you're just sitting tall, that's okay. Soften your arms into that right leg, which is on top. Long, soft breaths, trying to sustain the posture and breathe fully. Relax your jaw, relax your tongue. Breathe into sensation if you feel it in the pelvis, if you feel it in those outer hip sockets, maybe the inner inguinal region. Taking five more breaths on this side. Two more breaths. Feel free to use your voice as you exhale if it feels nice to allow sound or a sigh to come out of the mouth. Sometimes these postures feel so good or so intense that it activates a bit of sound and you're allowed to release it, right? If you're holding it in quiet and tight, not beneficial. Allow that organic freedom of the body, the expression to come forth. Last big breath here, option to sigh it out. And with the help of the hands, we move slowly to switch sides. So the right leg is now on the bottom. Moving gently, you'll feel the vulnerability in the joints, in the fascia, and bring that left heel on top of the right knee. Again, if that is overly stretching for you, take your left heel in front of the right knee. You're having a bit of a cross leg. Maybe that's enough. If it's not enough, you can stack. And then take your elbows, right elbow goes into the left foot, left elbow goes into the left knee, 
and you're physically leaning forward to add a little bit of gravity and weight into the legs. Once you find your posture, is it sustainable? Does it feel too deep immediately? Back out. We'll be here a while, so you want it to be a little bit easeful, and then you start to breathe. Drop into sensation, drop into where you feel it in your body. It could be the most obvious sensation you've had today. Follow the breath, fill the whole thoracic body with breath. Softening behind the eyes. Softening the pelvis. If you have any clenching of the glutes or the bum, release that space. Continue to breathe. If that beautiful beginning pranayam feels good, creating a pause at the top of the inhale. Creating a pause at the bottom of the exhale. Stick with it. Five more breaths. Soften the shoulders, soften the hands. Three more breaths, stay with it. Softening through the legs. You can go back into the realization of, is there any tension? Is there any clenching? Really let it go. Slowly coming out. Allow the hands to help the legs to unwind. There can be a lot of sensation as we move out of the posture. Ooh, for me, for sure. Send your legs out. Take your hands to cup your kneecaps, your patella, and just shake the legs. So the legs are passive. They might not want to move anyway because of that deep stretch. And then start to just rock them. So we're rocking them. We're clearing the energy lines. We're allowing all of that stretch to settle in. Mm, shake them two more breaths, hands do the work, pushing medial and allowing that recoil lateral. <sighs> Lovely. Slowly come to tabletop. I recommend a blanket underneath your knees. Maybe even a blanket underneath your hands. Spread your hands wide, broaden your knees, and begin to rock forward and back in tabletop. So we're sending the sit bones to the heels, and then we're pressing forehead towards the front of the mat. So it's forward and back. Breathing deep, inhale, exhale. Last two, just shifting forward and back. Yep, take it to tabletop. Take cat pose round the spine, pull the navel in. Take your chin to your chest. Hold this rounded back, but breathe into the lines of your spine. So we're inhaling and exhaling, but we keep the spine round. Mm. 
Exhale, lower the abdomen, lift through the tail, lift through the crown. Hold this posture, but keep the breath flowing. We breathe from the pubis to the nose. Last breath here, really arch the back. Take it into flat back, send your tail back towards your heels. As you lower down towards child's pose, take your right arm and thread it reaching to the left. Take your left hand and bring it underneath the right temple. So you're bending your left elbow your left hand becomes a pillow for your head. And you're laying on the right arm. You're constricting that right shoulder. You're bringing in a little squish to the lymphatic system underneath the right arm. And we follow the breath. We breathe into our scapula, subscapularis. We breathe into all parts of that right wing. Play with the breath. Notice if it feels best to keep it flowing in and out, or maybe that pause really brings in some nice stillness, some nice meditative ways about our breath, pausing. That right arm starts to feel a little numb. You can wiggle the right fingers. But just breathe through it. We're cutting off some of the circulation so that when we unwind, we get a whole fresh circuit of blood and lymph to the right hand. Take five more deep breaths. Unwind, press into your left hand and come back to tabletop. Ooh, notice the difference in the hands. Allow your belly to come back to the earth and lift your chest. Look up. Eyes stretch past the eyebrows. We activate the optic nerve. We breathe into the liver. And send your sits bones back towards your heels. This time threading the left arm underneath the right, getting low to the earth. Right elbow bends so that that right hand comes beneath the left side of the skull. I'm keeping my right palm on the ground and resting my head on the top of my hand. You can always flip your hand if it feels better to cup your skull. It's up to you. Relax into it, relax into the weight of your body, relax into gravity. Long deep breathing.
Take four more deep breaths, letting the weight of your body sink into the earth, sending down your roots to the center of the earth. If the left hand feels stuck, if that left hand starts to feel numb, bring a little bit of movement into the left hand. Slowly coming out, right hand comes into the shoulder. We release to come to tabletop. Mmm, take it into cat round the spine. Take your bolster or your pillow close in so that when you lie down, your liver and your diaphragm are pressing into the bolster. So my forearms are on the bolster. This is sphinx pose with a little extra lift. So if this feels like too much of a back bend, remove your support and place those forearms on the ground. Elbows are stacked right beneath the shoulders. And I like to have my hands into prayer pose to balance the right and left side of the body, the hemispheres of the brain, the lungs. Many things in our bodies have two sides, two chambers. So as we hold this posture, either with support or not, the length goes through the crown of the head, reaching up, a slight activation. And as we exhale, we soften our legs, we soften our glutes, we soften our pelvis, and we breathe into the low abdomen, the ovaries, the testes, the sex organs, no matter what sex you are, feel the breath. Release unnecessary tension, feel a nice elongation through the crown, but with a softness. We're not reaching with this intense face and this rigidity. We're just reaching through that golden chain. Long deep breaths. Taking five more breaths and see if the focus, the emphasis can be on the exhale. Soften the eyes, the tongue can be in the bottom palate or possibly tip of the tongue to the roof of the mouth. Sliding the tip of the tongue back towards the soft palate, back towards the throat. Last three breaths here, breathe deep to the pelvis. When you're ready to come out, bring the feet into flexion. So you're hooking your toes into the mat and we're just gonna lift the knees. See if you can engage your legs for a moment. 
Lift your knees off the ground, press your heels back, feel a little activation through the quads, and then soften the quads, keep the toes hooked under, bring your hands under your shoulders, press back so that you're seated on your heels. The toes are in flexion. The breath is broad. You can take your hands to your bottom ribs. And as you breathe, really picture this horizontal breath. Uh, your toes are in flexion, which is opening those lung capacities. The hands are at the ribs to feel that expansion. Little squeeze from the hands as you exhale. Three more breaths. Do your best to stay with toes in flexion. If this is super painful, come forward into tabletop, but keep those toes in flexion. We're plunging the body. Bring the hands to the mat. Keeping those toes hooked under, start to roll back into squat, malasana. And if malasana is hard for your knees, you can bring blocks or bolster under your butt and then bring a little movement into your feet. So you wanna rock slightly right to left to feel all of the toes, all of the bones of the feet to start to open. Slow movements, rhythmic movements, movements to be very mindful. So we're not just bop, bop, bopping around, but we're going slow, thought through, sensational. We can feel all the bones in the feet spreading. We can feel the grounding of the soles of the feet energetic opening down into the earth and then take it to center we forward fold so fingertips or palms on the ground and allow your forehead to melt towards the ground for three long breaths <sighs> Soften through your throat. Your chin can rest towards your chest. This is going to push through thyroid. It's going to regulate thymus. It's going to work with the whole endocrine system. Take three more breaths. You can sigh it out. Maybe coming back to that breath. The loud breath. <sighs> Inviting you slowly to straighten your legs, keeping the feet wider than the hips, keeping the knees bent so energy can flow. You just melt into your forward fold, releasing the head and the neck completely. Oh, if you need to stretch your hands and they reach the ground, press the tops of your hands into the earth, allowing the palms to point up to the sky. Fingers point to the back edge of your mouth. Five long breaths. Keeping bend to the knees, keeping the pelvis cascading forward. Last two breaths with their tension in your neck. Shake your head no. <sighs> and 
and slowly start to walk your hands forward, bringing those knees down to the earth. Bringing your right knee forward and your left leg back for pigeon. So I like to have the support in front of my right shin so that I don't overstretch. You can also lay flat into the ground. Those left toes walk back in space and the breath comes in and out with ease. Right leg is forward, right leg is in pigeon pose so that right knee is wide. Working towards getting the shin up parallel to the top of the mat and it's a deep, deep stretch into the six giant muscles of that right hip. And generally, we like to do right side first, that masculine side, the way that digestion works. That right side digestion is closer to the stomach, so it's earlier on in digestion. So we work that right side first, softening through the right side, working with the flow of the natural digestive energy. And then we do the left side to finish to allow for that easeful release not only with digestion, but with everything in life, right? Breathe fully into the right side. Let your head rest. If that means setting up a support system through your hands, any way that you can fully relax. If your shoulders are up to your ears in a squeeze mode, relax your shoulders. Find ease with five deep breaths, sending light and love and fresh, nutrient-rich blood into your right hip. Two more full breaths. Use the exhale to soften the body. Last complete exhale. Oh. Slowly undo this pigeon pose, press into the hands and slide that right leg back. Hook the toes into the mat and press through the heel. Let the energy press through the heel. Let the energy flush through the right leg. Bring that right knee to the mat. Slide the left knee forward for pigeon. If your knee has issues or old injuries, bring your knee to the center of the mat. If you can, take that shin more parallel to the top of the mat. Set up your support system for your elbows or your torso, and then melt down. Soften the body, soften the breath, soften all of the tissue, ligaments, and tendons around that left hip. Long deep breathing. Relax deep to your belly, relax deep to your pelvis. Utilize the exhale as a tool to soften. The exhale initiates 
parasympathetic nervous system, the rest and repose. So the more we learn to exhale, to truly empty our bodies, that softness, that space in between becomes like putty instead of like glue. Five more breaths, left side pigeon. Last two breaths, make some noise <laughs> as you exhale. Use your next inhale to come out slowly. Mm, press into your palms. Press into your right shin, slide the left leg back to hook those toes and extend through the heel. Oh, feel that open line of energy, nadis and meridian, the whole left side. Hmm. And slowly release. I invite you to take a reclining posture of your choice. So you can lay flat in Shavasana, we all know that posture. You can do supported fish pose, taking your bolster long ways and resting your spine onto the bolster. You can also lay flat with your knees supported by your pillow to really support any low back tension. So whatever pose you take, let it be sustainable and delicious for your shavasana as I go into the sound portion of the practice, the gong. So come into that position now, that soft position, that place that you can feel warm and allow the body to integrate. Hopefully finding your way there with ease. And when you get there, take a big clearing breath in through the nose, out through the mouth. Softening all the way. I invite you to let the sound wash over your body to repair and regenerate any cells that need extra love. Anything you're releasing over this new moon, anything you're calling in with this spring equinox, we are still in the portal. And just release and allow the sound to carry you. Thank you. 
Gently allow your awareness to come back to your body. Feeling that breath coming back into your belly. Moving the toes and moving the fingers so that you can roll onto one side of your body.
Come to the side of your body, rest in fetal position for a couple long breaths. Mm. When you're ready, come to seated. Come back to easy cross-legged pose or however you like to sit tonight. Completing your practice. Coming from A to Z. When you arrive in seated, sweep your arms out and up, inhale. Take your hands together, take your hands to your heart. Take a bow, honoring each other, honoring the practice, honoring the time spent, slowing down and reflecting on sensations in our body. Namaste. Have a beautiful night. If you enjoyed this practice, you can subscribe to the Wahe Crew YouTube and website. And if you have um, the means, you can donate through Venmo or PayPal to keep this service rolling. Thank you. Have a blessed Wednesday, and we'll see you soon.